Hello, my name is Rob Wilson, you're watching the Video Gadgets Journal, and this is an Android device. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you will know that I like to turn this Android device into something that looks quite striking on screen. And a lot of people have asked me how I do this effect. Well, this is a step-by-step -step guide on how to do it. Your first step is to get an Android screen recording application. There are plenty available in the Google Play Store, many of which are free. I recommend ADV Screen Recorder because it includes a few optional extras, but I'll just be showing you the basics today. You will also need to ensure that you have at least Android Lollipop 5.0, anything lower and you will need to root your device. Before you start a recording, go to the app settings and make sure that the recording resolution is set to at least 720 or 1080p and a bitrate of 10 megabits per second or higher to ensure a good quality recording. One final thing to note, don't change the orientation of your screen once you start recording. It will record in either portrait or landscape mode, but if you switch during recording, it will just stretch or squash the image. Now you should be ready to record. In the case of ADV, when you press a record button in the app, this readies your device for recording but doesn't actually start. You will see a green camera button in the top right of your screen, and when you tap that, your screen will start recording. From here, it's up to you to tap the buttons, swipe the screens and play the games that capture the action you want to use later on. If you've switched on the microphone option, it will record both the sounds of your device and any commentary you add, so bear that in mind for later editing. When you've finished recording what you want to capture, swipe down from your notifications and you can stop the recording to create your video file. Once you've finished your screen recording, that should store as an MP4 file and then you need to bring that file onto a computer. You can do this by plugging your smartphone into a computer with a micro USB cable. Then you can browse through the smartphone as if it was a hard drive and in this particular case, for this application, the video file is stored in ADV screen recorder folder on the smartphone. So go there, pick up the file and put it onto your computer as you would do with any regular file. Okay, now we have the video file on the computer. Next up, we are going to edit it in a video editing program to add all the effects that you see on my YouTube videos. In this particular example, I'm using Camtasia Studio because it's a very easy program to use with these instructions. So the first thing you need to do is import the video file into the program, and that's done by clicking on Import Media at the top and then choosing the file which we recorded off the Android smartphone and that will put it in the clip bin. This is where things start to get interesting. With that video file, I'm going to duplicate it on the video track here at the bottom because we need the main screen, but we also need to produce it as a background in a blurred fashion and this is how we do it. We bring the video file in twice, like so. And one thing you might want to do is if you do not want the audio, you can silence it twice. And then we want to bring this video track up two levels so that we have one track on track one and one track on track four. And I will explain why in a short while. So now we have two videos on track. One in the background and one in the foreground. And we're going to concentrate on the background video first, which is track one. First of all, shrink down your screen as much as possible because we need to take this first background video and drag it out of frame and then enlarge it so that it completely covers the background. So there's going to be a lot of dead space here at the top and the bottom, which we don't actually need. So the next thing you need to do is eliminate these areas of the screen by using the crop button in the top right. And when you drag down, you'll see yellow lines, which means that it's snapping to the frame. And that's exactly what you want in order to get the background to be the same size as the resolution of your video, which is 1920 by 1080. Like that. So if we look at the screen now, we can see that we have a duplication, the main screen in the foreground and the background screen as well, but it's still in focus, so it's very distracting. The next thing we need to do is blur this background. 
but the blur needs to be in front of the background but behind the foreground video. And this is done through a callout. So over on the left here, if you click on callout and add callout, then click on the arrow here to select what callout you want. And then in the specials, we have this blur option and that will create a blur effect. Now it's currently put it in track five, but what we need it to be is in track two. So that means it's in front of the background, but behind the foreground. So if you bring it down into track two, and then it's important to take out the fade in and fade out effect because we do not want them. And then align the blur to the timeline so that it's in the same length of time as the foreground and the background like so. The next thing you need to do is actually drag it out and fill the back of the screen. So on your image display here, pick up the blur and drag it to the top left hand corner. And as you can see now, it is starting to blur out the background and then you can enlarge that blur effect so that it blurs the entire background, but it leaves the foreground video still in focus. And that's how you have your background blur effect. There's just one more piece of this puzzle and that's to give the outline of the phone. What you need is a frame of a smartphone. And in my particular case, I use a Nexus 5 as it's quite a generic Android shape. So what I've done is I've gone to Google and searched for Nexus 5 frame. And when you do that, you just need to find the appropriate picture that looks like the cutout of a Nexus 5. So in this particular example, I'm going to choose this picture here, which has a transparent background and the cutout of a Nexus 5, which is absolutely perfect. I've already saved this picture, so I'm going to import it into my video editor now, like this. So we now have the image of the phone cutout, and we need to drag that into the timeline, and this is going in front of the blur, but behind the foreground videos. Now you probably can't see it yet because it's actually behind the foreground video and that's where we need to do a bit of resizing. So as you can see, I have selected the phone cutout, which means I can extend it and snap it to the video at the top and the bottom. And then the next thing we need to do is once we've aligned it with the timeline is click on track four, which is our video foreground and then shrink the video. And when we start to do that, we should see the phone cut out. And you can start to see it in the top there. And this is the case of just trying to be as precise as possible in order to get the video aligned, but so that you don't see any gaps in the video and the phone. Hopefully now that should be right. If I click off, I think I more or less have that right. And maybe just need to slightly adjust the video up and yes I can't see any of the background now so just to enlarge that a little bit you can now see that we have the background video which is blurred then the phone cutouts and then the foreground video placed inside the cutout and there's just one more thing you need to do at this point is select all of these tracks right click and then group it together which then means you can edit the videos and they will stay in sync because they're all part of the same video now like that. So at this point I can go through the timeline and I can maybe split it and then narrow down the timeline and trim it and everything will still stay in the position that it should be in terms of a timeline and a video sync. And the final result will look something like this. A few things to consider at this point. Unless you turn on developer mode on your Android device, it won't display your touches on screen, which can make it difficult to the audience to see what actions you are taking. And try to do your screen recording in one video because it's easier to trim and edit one video rather than have to set up the tracks as demonstrated earlier multiple times. So which do you prefer, the direct screen recording on the left or filming the traditional way through a camera on the right? If you choose the direct screen recording, remember these steps. Place one screen recording in the background and then extend it across the entire frame, crop it, and then place a blur effect in front of it. Then place the same video in the foreground and shrink it a little bit so you can bring in a smartphone cutout and place it directly behind the foreground video. 
The first few attempts may be a little frustrating, and it does take a bit of time and patience to master this effect. But practice makes perfect, and you'll soon have an awesome looking Android screen effect. And there you have it. I hope you found the guide useful and it gets your Android screens looking as good as mine, if not better. If you do struggle with this guide at all and have any questions, then just pop them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, do give it a thumbs up and please share it to anybody who might find it useful. And if you want to find out more about the Video Gadgets Journal and the type of videos I do here, then subscribe for more excellent content. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your tech day. Bye for now, everyone.